So I currently have some of these reasonably nice and bright LED bars above and below my kitchen cabinets, but I've been planning to upgrade them now for a little while, partly because they're not as long or well positioned as they could be, but partly because I can't control the color or brightness of them. They are a very bright white and they're either on or off. So I'm going to be taking some of this nice bright RGBW addressable LED strip and placing it the entire way along the top and bottom of my cabinets. This will hopefully give me much more consistent lighting where I need it, brightness control, color control, and the ability to control each section independently thanks to our clever little LED controllers, which you can buy now on Amazon. So the first thing I did behind the scenes was disconnect the power and buzz out each section of cabling going from light to light under my cabinets. And luckily the route that it takes was perfect for what I wanted to do. See, because addressable LED strips have a particular direction, I don't know if you can see the little arrow there, that tells you which way the data line flows. So I couldn't just throw up the LED strips in whatever order and just connect them all to power and hope for the best. I had to know which direction the cables would go. Since I already had a power supply up in the top left of my cabinets, I really ideally wanted the cabling to end in the bottom left so that I had the minimum path possible to then connect it to my cooker hood lighting, which I recently added in a previous video. And I wanted to connect this all as one long strip with the controller top left, right by the power supply. So it's definitely getting enough power, but then controlling the entire data flow all the way through my cabinets in one logical strip. The particularly great part of this setup is I already had good quality UK mains three core cable running through the walls behind the cabinets to each section of the existing lighting. And this is absolutely perfect for powering and running data for addressable LED strips. See, addressable LED strips simply need positive power, in this case, five volts, the negative connection to the power or the ground and a data line, which traverses in one direction, as I previously mentioned, through the entire strip. And because this is very good quality, thick mains copper cable, it really helps avoiding what's known as voltage drop which the longer the run of LED strip, the more the voltage drops and you end up needing to inject more power partway down the strip, especially with lower voltage strips like a five volt strip. So in this case, because I already had this mains cabling running the entire way through, I could connect that five volt power supply all the way through all of the cabinet junction boxes. And then I could connect at the start and end of each section of strip back to that good quality mains cable and avoid voltage drop on each section of the strip. So rather than it going in one bit of strip and out the other onto the next piece, dropping voltage the whole way through the very thin tracks of the LED strips themselves, I could connect each start and end strip back to the good quality copper mains cable and avoid voltage drop. So now let's dive into the action. The first thing I did was get up on top of the cabinets and disconnect those old dumb white LED bars. Then I went along the top of the cabinets, making sure to clean and clear the path for the LED strip that I will be sticking to the inside lip. And once I've done that, I worked my way along from the end of the cabinets back to the start, sticking the RGBW LED strip in place neatly the entire way along. Then after that, I got the LED controller that was formerly connected to my cooker hood section and moved it up to the beginning of the LED strip where it's ultimately going to live right by the power supply. Once that was done, I then connected up all of the individual pieces in a test configuration just to make sure that all the connections were going to work as I expected them to, that all of my solder joints on the LED strips were good and clean. And as you can see here, I am doing a quick run through the effective logical order of how everything is connected with the exclusion, but showing here that there will be a bit of wire running up to the cooker hood portion but that is not quite connected just yet. But I have the option there to power inject at the end. Once I'd run that test and confirmed everything was gonna work okay, I could start sticking the LED strips into the diffuser channels and then sticking the sticky pads on the back of the channeling and then cutting the actual diffuser on the front of the channel down to the correct length and then sticking them up underneath the cabinets. And then of course did the exact same thing over on the other side sticking the LED strips into the diffuser channel, sticking the sticky pads to the channel, sticking it up in place underneath the cabinet, 
and then doing the finicky process of attaching the diffuser. And then I finally connected the wiring that's gonna go up to the cooker hood as well. With that all said and done and the wires neatly tucked away underneath, you can see the final product is a much neater distribution of light the entire way across our cabinets and entirely across my lovely gin collection above as well. Now finally, let's run a quick video demo walkthrough of what you can do with addressable LED strips like this. Obviously I have an option to control them all as one big light and you can change the colors and the brightness like so. But I've also got the ability to turn them off as a whole and control each individual section as separate presets in the controller's software. So I can set up each section of these lights as a separate permanent device, which I can control independently. So whenever I walk into my kitchen, for instance, my gin collection is always illuminated at the top, but the under cabinet lights only turn on when someone is actually near them, thanks to the Akara FB2 presence sensor and its zone control. And the cooker hood only comes on when we're actually cooking something, which is pretty damn neat in my opinion. And it may be overkill for a lot of people, but I really love the versatility that this gives me all from a single LED controller, which is a mere 20 quid on Amazon. And the best part is there's a brand new version coming very soon with a built-in microphone, specifically so that you can run audio reactive stuff, which will be even more amazing as you may have seen from some of my previous videos testing it on our own software. We are doing the final validation of a new microphone, which we're hoping will work well with WLED as well. If you like content like this and harebrained smart home ideas, be sure to give me a subscribe and a follow. If you haven't already, please support the channel in any way that you can using the links over on my website. And remember, home is where the smart is.